science, technology, engineering, math. These are the subjects that are the basis for the acronym STEM, which you have probably heard many times in education and academic circles. STEM subjects have become a focus for many districts, as careers related to science, technology, engineering, and math are projected to grow considerably over the next 10 years. At Perky Omen Valley, teachers are using innovative methods to engage students in science exploration. One such example of this innovation can be found at Perky Omen Valley High School in Tom Lavanga's Earth Science and Physics classrooms, where students are learning with an augmented reality sandbox. To show if I cover the projector here, what we'll see down there is it's just sand you know, uh, without the light projecting on it. Um, um, so it's called an AR sandbox, augmented reality sandbox. Um, it combines a physical model with a virtual model. And in our geoscience courses especially, our earth system science courses, we can use this to uh, model hydrographic flow. We can model um, how to make contour maps, uh, topography maps. Um, and really just this interactive sort of three-dimensional experience is really uh, something that the kids seem to get pretty engaged in, as you can see. Inspiration for the AR Sandbox struck during Mr. Lavanga's visit to Fairmount Waterworks in Philadelphia. And they have a whole display on watersheds down there when they talk about how Philadelphia used to extract water from the Schuylkill River and store it in reservoirs, which is now the Art Museum. And they had one of these there, and it was super interactive. Um, I loved it just as much as my kids did. And, uh, you know, so kids and adults kind of get excitement out of it. Um, and so I thought it'd be fun to build one and use one in our classrooms. So how does it work? Mr. Lavanga adapted a code made available by a professor from the University of California, Davis, to create his own AR sandbox. This is software created by a guy named Oliver Kralos out at UC Davis in California. Uh, he's a geoscience professor out there and he wrote the code, um, C and C++ programming language, and he made the code freely available. Uh, to the general public, uh, which is a really neat thing uh, that he did that. So uh, all I had to do was go to his website, download the uh, source files, compile them, and put them on a computer and build the box. So the computer is interfaced with the sandbox? Yeah, uh, so basically there's a there's a Kinex camera here, an Xbox Kinex camera, which reads the depth changes. There's a depth camera in there. Uh, so using infrared light, it measures uh, you know, which parts of the sand are closer and which are farther away. It feeds that data to the computer program, which then processes it, processes it and sends it to the projector and to the monitor, dual kind of output here. Uh, and then on top of all that 3D topographic map projection, it's doing this really complicated water simulation, uh, which is using these things called the Stokes-Reyes equations, um, it's just some differential calculus equations, which are simulating real-time water flow. The sandbox is making it easy to illustrate earth science concepts, but Mr. Lavanga is already thinking of ways to use the sandbox to demonstrate other subjects like physics. So we can simulate rainfall, this cloud. Uh, anything above a certain altitude of the box, the program interprets as a rain cloud, and so it simulates rain on the surface below that. Um, so if you're teaching about watersheds, you can really show visually how water that falls on one side of a continental divide goes to the Atlantic Ocean and water that falls on the other side goes to the Pacific Ocean. Um, I can flood the whole box here, fill up the lake, make a global flood. Um, one of the things sort of uh, inadvertently that I noticed is that we can use this in physics because uh, we teach about uh, wave properties and wave behaviors, reflection, refraction, diffraction. And uh, it doesn't show so well in the sand, but if you look at the, I don't know if you can get the screen there. Uh, I'm going to take an obstacle and just place it in the center of the lake here. And you can watch when it shows up. It simulates the actual wave disturbances that would occur uh, due to that object that's in the way. Or if there's a landslide on one side of the ocean basin, it simulates what would be essentially a tsunami uh, riding up. Uh, the opposite side of the ocean basin, uh, and you can see it, you know, kind of there a little bit better. There goes the tsunami 
you know, infiltrating into land some number of feet. And the ideas for the, the sandbox water, this is keep kind of flowing. Something I added in at the end with okay. my tackle box here. Uh, you can change the water to lava. Wow. So you, can do a, you can do a volcano in the center and make a simulated volcanic eruption. Uh, we can change it to polluted water, toxic waste, tropical water, or just back to regular water. Students are enjoying the opportunity to experience science hands-on here at Perkiomen Valley. Learning opportunities like these convey important concepts in an engaging way, and they might just inspire our students to pursue careers in the STEM fields. Thank you for watching.